Hello. This is a great practice of 11 yoga and breathing exercises to help develop calmness, expansiveness, creativity, and deeper, more profound communication skills. I specifically made this as a practice when I was dealing with thyroid issues, specifically hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. I was studying for two months with an Ayurvedic doctor one-on-one -on -one in India, and he inspired me to develop this practice from his lessons. We'll start with sitting in Vajrasana. This is called the firm pose. What you will want, if this is uncomfortable for your knees or your feet, is to take a blanket or even a meditation bench, and you'll sit that in between the backs of your thighs and your calves. If you're okay bending your knees in this position, but it's uncomfortable for your feet, you can always create a slight roll in a blanket, and then your feet don't have to be so flat on the floor. If this position is not for you, pick another position that's more comfortable. Sitting up nice and tall, palms turned upwards, resting right in the hip socket, shoulders relaxed, heart open, bottom of your belly lifting upwards without caving in the space so that you can still breathe in deeply and lengthen your spine. Lengthen through the back of your neck and lift from the top of your head, the crown of your head, which is closer to the top back of your head. Letting that space flow up to the sky. We're gonna do a couple very interesting breathing exercises to begin. The rest of the practice will look more normal, I promise. This first one is called Jalandhara Bandha. And we start with Ujjayi breathing. In Ujjayi breathing, you actually constrict the throat a little bit so that you make this sound kind of like Darth Vader or an ocean wave. And you're just breathing through the nose, even though you're feeling the noise in your throat. Think of sending the breath to the back of your throat and try to make both the inhale and the exhale noisy. The next stage is adding a frog in your throat. So you're going to inhale Maybe you caught that. At the end of the inhale, that's when the frog jumps into the throat and you just finish the inhale with tensing all of the muscles inside the throat. What we're doing is creating more stimulation for that body part so we can bring more blood flow to that area. What we're thinking about is bringing more love and more nourishment and more energy to this part of the body. And we're gonna do this three to five times Inhaling with the ujjayi breath, clench the throat, hold for a few counts, and then release. Just a cautionary, if you have high blood pressure, cardiovascular issues, or if you're pregnant, it's not generally recommended to be holding your breath. And here we go. Inhale. Clench the throat, hold for a moment, slowly exhale. One more time, inhale, clench the throat, hold for a moment, and exhale. Lion's breath, Simhasana. This may be a little different than you're used to practicing it. Big inhale, and then you're not going to exhale or make a sound. You're gonna open your mouth and stick your tongue as far out of your mouth as you can and hold the breath there for as long as it feels okay, and then exhale after that. It goes like this.
exhaling through the nose. Let's try this together. Inhale, exhale, stick your tongue out, holding the breath there for as long as you can, just until it feels like it's a challenge, not until you pass out, please, and then exhale through the nose and relax. Let's do this two more times. Inhale, stick your tongue out, hold the mouth wide open, holding the breath. You can silently affirm, I purify my thoughts, my speech, my every action. I purify my thoughts, my speech, my every action. And then exhale and relax. Very good. We're going to shift positions into the cat-cow position. I'm going to teach a couple things in this practice in a way I would not normally recommend because this is for therapeutic purposes. And normally we want to bend the neck just as much as we bend the rest of the spine, partially to keep the flow of energy and partially to protect the neck. But we are trying to open and stimulate the throat area so we will move the neck more than what I would normally recommend. If you are over 50, if you have any neck issues, then I would recommend keeping just a gentle motion instead of doing the full range. If you're not sure about anything, just check with your doctor. Coming to hands and knees position, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, starting with a neutral spine, elbows unlocked, eyes looking down to the floor, or if you need to look at me, just turn your head sideways. As you inhale, lengthen your spine from your tailbone out the crown of your head. Exhale, draw your navel upwards, lift through the middle of your back, press your hands into the floor, and let your head release downwards. As you inhale, think more of opening your heart forward so that we don't drop in the low back and compress it. And if it feels okay, you're gonna lift your chin all the way, really opening the throat. On your next exhale, draw your chin in all the way towards your chest if that feels okay. You might feel a little bit of tickling, that's okay. Inhale and open up all the way. And exhale, shift in the other direction two more times. Inhale, open your heart, open the front of your throat. Exhale, opening through the back of the throat, drawing energy into the front of the throat. Inhale. And exhale. Coming to a neutral spine first. Turn yourself around. And do the hokey pokey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is the boat pose, Navasana. Laying all the way down on the floor. And let's start with the knees bent here. Your first option is to bring your knees over your hips and have your hands behind your head for support. Just slightly draw your chin in towards your chest and exhale, lift your upper body. If your head does not need the support, you could reach your arms by your sides. If you can maintain a neutral spine and you're up for more challenge, you're going to extend your legs a few inches over the floor. And then you're going to breathe here. You can silently affirm to help give you the power to be here. Within my every breath is infinite power. Within my every breath is infinite power. Within my every breath is infinite power. And as you exhale, bend your knees first and slowly relax yourself down one foot at a time. Work up towards doing that for an entire minute. Set to Bandhasana, the bridge pose. This is nice to do with a blanket because it's going to help relieve a little bit of the tension on the neck. If it's okay for you to do this flat on the floor without the blanket, then you'll wanna do that as well to create more compression for this practice. And again, if you're over 50, 
any neck issues, they're going to modify so that we don't cause harm or injury to our precious throat. Laying down on the blanket, fringe edge is facing the feet. And then your head is off the blanket, shoulders on the blanket, about two to three inches down from the top edge of the blanket. If you have big shoulders, you'll be further down. And if you're very flexible, you'll be further down. So that by the time you roll your hips up, your shoulders will reach the edge of the blanket. And then you'll have your feet parallel, hips width wide apart, toes pointed straight away from you, heels in close towards your hips, arms by your sides, shoulders down your back. Press your feet into the floor. As you exhale, first just tuck the pelvis under, and then inhale, roll off the floor, one vertebrae at a time, opening your heart here. Keep the right, trying to tuck the pelvis under while lifting up higher. And if your hips are above the point where there's a straight line, and you want a little more out of this, you're gonna walk your shoulders underneath you interlace your fingers, press your shoulders into the floor, and float up a little bit higher, still tucking the pelvis under. Head is always staying still in this position with eyes looking upwards. Breath is flowing as if your thoughts are moving with your breath. And you can even silently affirm, I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. When you are ready to come out of this position, slowly bring your shoulders back out from underneath you. Exhale, roll down from the top of your spine to the bottom, one vertebrae at a time, tucking your pelvis under and relaxing at the bottom. <clears throat> Take the blanket out from underneath you. Apanasana. This is just great for digestion. Simply lift up one knee and then the other knee. Exhale, draw your chin towards chest, lifting your forehead towards your knees, squeezing yourself in as tight of a ball as you can make yourself be in. And you can feel the squeezing and the soaking of the organs in your stomach and your intestines. A lot of diseases actually start with digestion. So this is a great thing for everyone to do, whatever you're struggling with. Breathe while you're here, keep squeezing up higher. You may feel the abdominals engaging, that's totally fine. And then exhale, slowly release your head down, one foot and the other foot. Turn over onto your stomach. <laughs> Extend your arms out in front of you. Extend your legs back behind you. Press your pubic bone into the floor so that you end up in a neutral spine. Keep your legs hip width wide apart. First option is to exhale and extend your left leg back and up. And inhale, lower down. And then exhale, extend the right leg back and up. Still keeping the belly lifted and pubic bone down. Inhale, bring the leg back down. Repeat or second option, lifting opposite arm and leg. Lengthen and then inhale, float up. And exhale, lower down. Other side, inhale up. Think more of lengthening than lifting. And exhale, lower down. If you have any issues with your spine, you'll want to repeat either the first or second option. If you want more challenge, no issues with the spine, both hands and feet coming into the air for the full locust, Salabhasana. And extend and then inhale, float upwards. Still think of pressing the pubic bone into the floor. Continue to lengthen front and back. And you can silently affirm I soar upwards on wings of joy. I soar upwards on wings of joy. Inhale, float up higher. And exhale, slowly lower down. You can bring your 
hands underneath your shoulders. Exhale, slowly press your hips back towards your heels, resting in child's rest for a brief moment. And then when you're done, hands underneath your shoulders. Slowly press yourself up. Sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. This will bring lots of blood flow and invigorating energy to your throat, getting your body upside down to reverse the effects of aging. This is a very advanced pose, and the first time that you do it, I recommend doing it under the supervision of an instructor. So I will give you an alternative option. Also, if you have neck or shoulder issues, this is the option for you. Laying on your back with your feet up in the air, you can relax your legs against a wall so that you can be in this position longer. If you are going into the full position, you're welcome to put a blanket underneath you, just like we did for step two bandhasana, the bridge pose. Letting your arms rest by your sides and feet back up in the air. As you exhale, push your hands into the floor and let your hips start to peel up in the air. Then bring your hands behind your back, walk your shoulders underneath you, elbows together, hands up your spine, legs reaching high into the air as if somebody is lifting your feet. Press head and shoulders and elbows into the floor to float up even higher. Make sure that your neck feels okay. Always keep your head still in this position with your eyes looking upwards towards the ceiling. And as you feel that rush of energy, you can silently affirm, God's peace now floods my being. God's peace now floods my being. From here, we'll go straight into the plow pose, halasana, keeping the spine neutral. Slowly as you exhale, lower the legs. You can bring your hands to the floor for more support or keep them on your back. Once you get your feet there, if there's no issues with your spine, you can walk your feet further back, pressing into your heels. Walk your shoulders underneath you, interlacing your fingers, feeling an even greater release through the back side of your body. And you can silently affirm new life, new consciousness, now flood my brain. New life, new consciousness. Now flood my brain. To come out of this position, hands to your back. Exhale, slowly lower one vertebrae at a time. Then hands to the floor. Bend your knees, one foot at a time. Coming to the floor. Fish pose, Matsyasana. This will open up the neck in the other direction. This is going to be another caution for the neck. If you are over 50 or have any neck or shoulder issues, then you're going to have a minimal bend in your neck. You may be putting a pillow underneath your head or keeping your chin on your chest. I'll remind you when we get into the pose. For therapeutic reasons, if there's no issues with your neck and you're very young, you can see how it feels to let your head release further if you have any doubt about any of these poses, always talk to your doctor. Arms underneath your body, walking your hands down, palms facing downwards. Extend your legs. Press your hips into your hands, elbows into the floor. Exhale as you bend your elbows and float your heart upwards. If you're doing minimal bend in your neck, then you'll start just right here. There's no weight on the head. And if your head is in the air, then put a pillow underneath your head. If this is uncomfortable for your neck, bring your chin to your chest. If it's okay, you can see how it feels to let your head fall further back. Really, really opening up the neck space nice and wide. You can also affirm as you feel your heart opening, my soul floats on waves of cosmic light. My soul floats on waves of cosmic light. To come out of this position, draw your chin towards your chest. And then exhale, lower your spine down to the floor. Resting here for a moment. One last position.
position. This is the Drasana sitting position again, or any sitting position that is comfortable for you. We're going to do Kapalabhati Pranayama. You want to make sure that your nose is clear before you do this. You may need to blow your nose. I'm giving you another caution again. If you have high blood pressure, cardiovascular issues, or if you're pregnant, this is probably not for you. You'll do a more gentle breathing exercise instead. This is very invigorating. It's going to raise your energy quickly and help move everything around so nothing gets stuck. This will also eliminate toxins out of your system. The focus is on the exhale. The exhale happens out of the nose because you push the belly in sharply. Then you let the inhale just naturally happen and flow in as you relax the belly. It looks like this. You'll notice I did a nice, slow, even rhythm. We're going to do this for repetitions of 12 in one set. Then take a nice deep inhale and exhale, relaxing. And you can repeat up to nine sets of 12, counting up to a total of 108 times. If you feel lightheaded, headachey, uncomfortable at any moment, then you know you've gone too much and you've done enough for today. Try this out first. Push the belly in and push the breath out of your nose. Just let everything relax and the inhale naturally flow in. Let's do the full set together. And exhale. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. And exhale. Repeating again. Exhale. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. Exhale. If you're feeling good, you can continue seven more sets of 12 if you'd like. Take some time at the end of this practice to sit with your eyes closed, gazing slightly upwards under closed eyelids, allowing everything that you just did to assimilate and giving yourself the opportunity to rejoice in all the nourishment that you just fed your body. Thanks for tuning in. Have a blessed day.